É, o fresco, né? É? Fechei, cara. E é? Tá, Hey everybody, can I please have your attention? Is everyone ready? Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us. Will you please just raise your hand to ask a question and only speak into the microphone, please? It will be sent to you. Yes, sir. Then what is the fitness status of Tavi and will he play tomorrow or not? Um, it's obviously a selection thing and we'll decide that tonight uh, for tomorrow. Um, he has bowled this week and comes through that perfectly fine. So uh, it's just whether we, we feel the need to risk him tomorrow or not. That's something we'll decide later. Smith, there's a lot of talk about uh, how teams should peak at the right time. Uh, you haven't made two World Cups. I mean, normally World Cups are fairly long tournaments spread for almost one and a half months. Uh, do you think that something like peaking at the right time can be controlled? And how you make out that the team is picking up or it's the right time for the team to pick up? Look, I, I think in sport today everyone's trying to work out what the, the right method is and you know, I think it will probably change for forever to come. You know, it's some, some teams seem to get it right and who knows what the reason is. But um, it is a bit weird that I've been in India for over a month and only played three games. Um, it's very unusual on the current uh, you know, sort of schedules that we have. Um, but I think the good thing for us now is that we play a couple of games close together before the quarterfinals, and you know, hopefully that all goes well, and um, you know, we qualify well for the quarterfinals, and we're ready to go. You know, we have an opportunity now with a game every three or four days to really build up some momentum, which is something that's important for us. It's been a little bit stop-start with the long breaks so far. Um, six times in nine test matches, five times in thirteen ODIs. I'm sure you don't fancy being the current family, so. Uh, if you can uh, just talk us through that. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in hiding from it. He has been very successful to me and a number of left-handers throughout uh, his career. He's a, he's a quality bowler with a new ball, um, and it's going to be a challenge. You know? So I've worked on a few things, uh, you know, facing him uh, with, with Duncan Fletcher, so hopefully it'll pay off. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Grim, uh, you've been experimenting with the bowling. You've been opening with spinners. Uh, uh, and people are wondering whether you are playing, not really playing to your strengths, uh, which generally has been past bowling. Uh, how has your plan with the bowling plan of uh, the that? I think it's been very successful for us so far. You know, I think um, everything we've worked, well, everything we've tried seems to have worked in the bowling front. I think uh, as a bowling unit, we've been very strong in this, this, this tournament so far. Um, and uh, yeah, I think our unpredictability is something that, that stands us in good stead. I think uh, most people have felt through the past we've been predictable and you know what to expect from a South African team, but I think we're a lot more difficult to plan against now. Um, I still think that whoever has a responsibility needs to commit to it 100% and execute their skills well, and I think we've done that. We've done that so far in our three games. Okay. Um, yeah. There is a lacking image of Ben State and Mocking, creating havoc in the Indian banking line of in South Africa. How many considerations you factor in looking at my team Indian banking line of yet again? And in the backdrop of you starting out with a spin on uh, that option, is it a feasible option in uh, you know taking into considerations Indian batsmen's uh, you know kind of they're very easy against the spinners? And you need to look at it differently now. Well, I, th I think the fact that you're asking me, asking me that question means that we've got a few things up our sleeve and it's more difficult to plan against. You know, I think we've got the options available to us, and obviously I wouldn't like to sit here today and tell you what those options are, you know, because I'm giving them all away. But um, you know, I think all in all, we've, our bowlers have had um, a good, good amount of success against India over the last period of time. We obviously know each other pretty well after. You know, playing the whole summer in South Africa against each other. Um, this is a ground that our bowlers have had success on. Also, you know, we've had a very successful test test match win here. Um, we've spent, uh, I think, I've spent a month of my life in in Nagpur, so we know it pretty well now. Um, and uh, we've had a good week of preparation here, so we're looking forward to tomorrow. It's, it's obviously going to be a wonderful occasion, and we're really excited about it. Graham, uh, most of the time when uh, we never asked uh, to any captain, most of them say that every game is important in, in the World Cup. But uh, given the form of the team side in the recent past, would you say it's the biggest match in the World Cup? 
Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think there's still a long way to go in this World Cup. I mean, obviously, I would reckon both teams really want to be, you know, play well tomorrow. Uh, certainly, we do. But um, I don't think it's the be all and end all of the World Cup. Uh, the result tomorrow, um, obviously, that will come with the quarterfinals, semi-finals, and finals. You know, that becomes the important important phase of the World Cup. Um, you know, right now, this part is about qualifying and, and having confidence going into the knockout phases. So. Tomorrow is obviously an important game uh, for, for both teams in terms of the confidence and, and hopefully playing well. Graham, uh, you spoke about the bonus team very well last time you were here in Nagpur. And uh, Dale, of course, had an unbelievable spin of reverse thing. Do, do you think reverse thing will still be uh, quite a big factor tomorrow given that it's a day and night game? Yeah, well, we spoke to the curator and he doesn't reckon there will be much due tomorrow night. Um, Conditions have been pretty warm, and I think tomorrow is going to be pretty warm again. Um, the outfield is pretty lush uh, at the moment. Uh, the pitch looks really good. Um, you know, I still expect there to be a amount of reverse swing with the white ball. I still expect it to play a, play a role. Maybe not as much of a role as it did in, on the wicket we played in Chennai, but um, I think it still will, 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 will play a role. Yes, um, from Anagha, from Yahoo, have you had a chance to look at the pitch yet? And you know, your thoughts on? Yeah, I just went out there now. It, I mean, he's been rolling it for three or four days, so uh, hopefully it'll be very good. It looks very good. Um, yeah, it just just generally looks like a good wicket. So, uh, Graham, okay. uh, do you think in this sense that collapse against England was a good thing to happen because you it's exposed your middle order at this stage of the tournament rather than before the knockout stage? Everyone's got some time. And obviously, the result didn't go the way you want. Yeah, look, I, I think uh, you know the spirit around the group is still terrific, um, and I think if you can keep that and, and learn some important lessons, I don't think our middle order is going to encounter as challenging wicket as that. Uh, maybe something similar throughout the tournament, but I don't think it's going to get worse for them than that. So, I think the lessons that they'll take out of that that game will be important, um, and I think it's just important for that middle order, the middle order of ours, to find a flow, to find a find a bit of an energy flow and a rhythm going there. And, and hopefully they'll, they'll do that in this game and get some confidence and you know, hopefully Top Water can keep laying good, good platforms for them. Great. You know, whenever a World Cup becomes, like the last few, previous three World Cups, before the World Cup begins, South Africans are called the overwhelming favourites. And there's just one hiccup and suddenly people start calling them a bunch of trophies. So what are you doing to restore some sanity, restore some balance in this World Cup in terms of team preparation? To be honest with you, the sanity within the squad is you know, keeping all the outside influences out, you know. Um, to be honest with you, I think coming into the tournament, no one really said we were favourites. Suddenly you win two games, you become favourites, you lose a game, and suddenly you're not favourites anymore. So I think having a decent perspective on things within the group is always important, you know, knowing what you want to achieve and, and working towards the things that you're trying to achieve as a group. And it shouldn't just be a short-term thing, a World Cup thing. It should be, you know, what you want to achieve over a period of time as a as a team. And I think we've been working towards this for a period of time now. And, I'd like to think that our confidence and our strength within the group is more powerful than just one result, you know. So, you know, no matter what, who knows what's going to happen in the World Cup, but we're going to keep giving our best, we're going to keep preparing well daily, and uh, we're going to keep putting out hopefully strong performances. That's, that's what we're looking forward to doing. Graham, yeah, uh, do you think tomorrow's match is a competition between the best bowling unit and the best batting unit uh, in the competition? And the team winning here uh, will have a huge uh, psychological advantage in this uh, World Cup going ahead. Because some of the experts in South Africa or in India think South Africa is the favourite for tomorrow's match. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think any time you, you play a team at home, I would think that they would be favourites, um, just naturally. Um, but uh, I think both teams are accustomed to each other now. I've played a lot of cricket uh, against each other, know each other pretty well. So I think it, it's all set up for a very exciting game tomorrow. And I think just another really good game of cricket for, for the World Cup will be terrific. Uh, obviously, Personally, would love to come out on the winning side, you know. But as I said earlier, I don't think it's going to be the be-all and end-all of the World Cup tomorrow. As a result, there's a lot of cricket still to be played, but there's no doubt in my mind that we want to win tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Watch it from ESPN. A team comprising of Derek Stein, Alex Amla, the various young leg spinner in the heat. There's a criticism around about that somehow South Africa don't put up. In, in major tournaments come to the World Cups or the bigger tournaments, they, they actually go and flag uh, on the right step, grab in the state which they should deliver. 
So is, is that a thought which is worrying you right now at this moment going into a big match knowing very well that a loss tomorrow will put you up against Ireland on 50 wherever reputation of giant killers and then 50 is not being a very good day of March probably are you worried about the Irish of March? Are you feeling the pressure or am I feeling the pressure? <laughs> No, I'll give it to you. I mean, look, tomorrow is our focus. We're not getting too far ahead of ourselves, you know. Um, to be honest with you, it's no point of us trying to hide from the perception. You know, it's our, our job now as the current group of players to hopefully challenge that perception and and to put it right. You know, our past is our past, and we can't hide from it. Uh, we haven't won a, uh, a World Cup or a, or a tournament of note for. A, I think since the Champions Trophy, but it's growing bigger. So there's no point us hiding away from it. We just we have the opportunity now, tomorrow, the next day, to to be hopefully the current crop of players that can challenge that perception, and, and hopefully we do. Okay. And how do you do that? Is there like team motivation stops? Thank you, sir. Yes, we want to. Yeah. Just on Tony said in his PC that you know he's happy uh, if his bowlers give up his 70 runs in 20 overs and not take any wickets. But you, on the other hand, have pulled in power plays with Tahir and Stain, and you kind of brought them back, uh, attacked in the middle. Of the so, is the clash of philosophy that uh, did that sort of a uh, you know a strategy work in this World Cup? Look, you know, uh, 20 over 70 and more wickets. But oh, look, I've got a lot of respect for MS, and uh, I like him a lot as a person and as a captain. Um, so I mean, I think each team has their philosophies, what they think can be the most successful for them. And obviously, you know, for us, if we can pick up wickets, we, we feel it's the best way to, to curb run rate and to control the game. We've got a lot of wicket-taking options in our lineup, which is something that we wanted. Um, and so far in the tournament, we've managed to, to pick up wickets regularly. And even when a team's got a partnership, when they've given us an opportunity, we've seemed to have picked up one or two or three, uh, you know, after that, which has been really good for us. So, yeah, hopefully that will continue. Hopefully it will continue us bowling as well as we have. Um, and if we can keep posting decent totals, uh, you know, I really believe we've got uh, the lineup to to defend totals. Yeah. Okay. Guys, just the last three. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And how much, uh, in your opinion, is the carry person factor going to matter in tomorrow's match? Well, to be honest with you, I think I got asked that question for two and a half months in South Africa. I mean, Gary's been around for a long time with India now. You know, I don't, I don't think so much anymore. You know, obviously what he's brought them as a coach is important, but you know, we've played enough against India now over the last two and a half months for them to know us well and for us to know them well. So I think both teams have a really good idea about what to expect tomorrow. And I think it's even, it's going to be a good wicket. I don't see the toss playing a massive role in the game tomorrow, so whoever performs well on the day tomorrow, I think that's going to be the winner. That, that's simply what it's going to be, I think. It is? Just me. Graham, is Haas Amy's back? Can you expect him to keep tomorrow? Yeah, he's, he's recovering decently. Um, obviously, you know, we'll look at that and look at the selection of the team and we'll decide uh, which way we want to go with that. Last question, sir. Uh, Graham, uh Indian caption Tony has admitted to weaknesses in both fielding and, and uh, bowling. And they probably can't win last year and the tournament to the batting. Is that also your perception of India's weakness against the I think it's probably a fair a fair assessment, you know. I think their batting is a very powerful lineup, you know, they've they don't seem to go in with too many frontline bowlers. They you know, have a certain amount of frontline bowlers, but have you know used their part time as well. Um, and if they can create pressure, you know their part timers can get away with stuff. So I think partnerships against uh, with the bat against India are, are key. It's going to be quite a big field here. Yeah, so you know hopefully we can be a lot more mobile with them. You know in, in the field and and running between the wickets. So those are things that we hopefully can use to our advantage on on this bigger field here. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.